Sportscast talking wrestling on the horn back for the second hour. Thanks to Fight Night ATX for the second hour. Stu Myrick, Justin Smash Simmons, and joining us in studio, uh, a man that I have been wanting to catch up with for so long, is a good friend of ours. He is the owner and operator for America's Academy of Pro Wrestling right here in Austin, one of the premier pro wrestling schools around the area. Ray Campos, commonly known as Papa Don. What's up, Ray? How you doing, man? Thank you for having me, Stu. I'm glad to be here. So let's let's get into a little bit about your background first as far as wrestling goes before we go to get to the school. Um, how long have you been involved in wrestling? What got you started and what got you started in teaching pro wrestling? Well, if you, uh, as you well know, that I was uh, George's, George De La Isla, the, the founder of AAPW, uh, back in 1990. Uh, I started with George back in 1995. And at that time, uh, George trained me. I went on to um, wrestle for 17 years. I retired, officially retired, hung it up in 2012. And from 2000 on to 2012, I was under the tutelage of George Alaysla, learning, uh, teaching, learning how to uh, do everything, run, how to run a wrestling school. And uh, so I did that. And, uh, of course, all the talent that was coming through at the time. And uh, so I did that. And, uh, you know, just uh, sitting there learning from the, you know, like any student or any person that's coming up, you want to sit there and just shut your mouth and learn. So that's what I did. Yeah, I, I imagine it. George Daly is such a dear friend of ours. Uh, you know, we've known him forever. I've known him uh, probably going on at least 20, 25 years. I worked. There was a there was a uh, uh, independent promote Lone Star Championship Wrestling. I don't know if you remember even here in Austin. Mm-hmm. And uh, worked a couple shows, and he was around, so I got to meet him then. And then, of course, we reunited a couple years ago after I started after we started the radio show. So. I uh, love George to death. Um, give me, give me your, so what got you into uh, running AAPW? Back in 2017, when I was, uh, I was out of the, uh, I took a little break from professional wrestling and uh, I came back to Austin, moved back to Austin. Um, so at that time, George was always uh, telling me, you know, my health, I'm having health issues and you know, he's had some, yeah. a lot of health issues in his past. So, um, he always wanted to leave or have someone take over America's Academy of Pro Wrestling, but he wanted somebody that would that would run his uh, philosophy of professional wrestling on how he taught and what he taught and how he taught us and and all the the goals that we had to to produce and how to make pro wrestlers how to how to produce a pro wrestler you know because anybody can walk into a wrestling school and they can teach you a body slam a, a suplex and a, and a leg drop and say poof you're a wrestler that's the way it goes and that's is it but it, with America's Academy of Pro Wrestling I think more than anything else, we teach the fundamentals, the basics of professional wrestling. And I don't teach, I don't, I don't go in there and teach my style or teach Georgia's style. I teach basics professional wrestling. And I think this is what's helped our guys and girls that have gone on because they're so technically sound in what we do. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. I, I recall a, a lot of the stuff that you preached even then. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was the mechanics. Yes. Are your mechanics sound? Can you do this not just once, not just twice, but can you do it 50 times in a row, being perfect every time? It was being perfect every time, but it was also one of the things that you don't see in wrestling schools, and I'm not here to you know harp on nobody, but I, I think the main thing that you want to preach on today is teaching guys is placement positioning how to you know how to how to how to make a show look great and without going in there and killing yourself and looking stupid in the process you know so you want to go out there because people are paying their money to come see you and they want to be entertained so they're not going to come out there and see two guys left fall over the left two feet you know fall over and fall down but but besides that what what you and george provided and and i speak because I, i recall going through the training myself I'm not saying that I was great or anything like that, but I know what you provide for other people that really made it in the business, especially at that level when you're just breaking in, is the psychology and understanding why you're doing something and understanding how come you're doing it. Right. And of course, because the the main the main issue there was the fans. Of course, the people were there and they're the ones that are coming out to see you and they want to be part of it. So make showing these guys how to uh, I mean, I'm going to use an analogy, putting the fans in the palm of your hand and, and making them follow you, even if it's a good time or a bad time. They're going to love you. They're going to hate you. Regardless of the fact, they're going to be with you for the whole ride, starting from opening bell to the very end of the bell that night. So that's one of the things that I taught and I still teach today was showing these guys how to produce and how to do a wrestling match and how to keep the fans entertained and how to you know make it look 
make it look great. So I guess the level of excellence that I that I, that I brought forth after what George taught me, and then pushed it to another level. Talk with Ray Campos, the head of America's Academy of Pro Wrestling. You find them at officialaapw.com. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what are you seeing today from your students as far as, you know, their influences in pro wrestling, what they what they perceive as what they want to do in pro wrestling? Can you just give me an idea of some, you know, the, the average individual that walks in, what do you see from them and where do you take them from there? One of the main things I get from people when they always walk into my into my office, they ask me, my dream is to be this and my dream is to do that. And of course, I always make it very clear to them from the get go that your dream is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your entire life. And so I, I kind of make it out to them and explain to them that. Um, yes, you can achieve this dream, and this dream is possible if you work hard, but nobody's going to give you nothing in this business. So you have to go out there, and you have to give it your all from beginning to the very end until the day you quit wrestling. And so today I'm seeing that guys that come in here have the desire, but then a lot of them come in, and they realize that what we do in the ring isn't all what they see on TV, and then I have to show them that, you know, what you see on TV is only 10% of what we do. Mm -hmm. The other 90% is done in a place like this. <laughs> and Amazing how that works. Exactly. So they don't, they, don't, they don't realize that all the hard work that went in before the case, before you put the cameras and the lights and the fans and, and the announcers and the bell and everything else, what went into that? And they have no concept of that. So as soon as they grasp that and they understand what's going on, then they have a better understanding and they work harder to, toward their goal. It seems like when they once they understand that, that's when the learning begins. Really, absolutely, right. absolutely, and they get over the the pain of you know learning the falls and learning <laughs> the moves and learning all this, and, and they get over all that. So I think the first I, I tell them everything every time the first two three months are the hardest ones because your body has to get callous to what we do, uh, taking the falls and taking the hits and hitting the ropes and falling down and standing back up and getting dizzy and there's so much to it. You know, you learn that difference between being like. Just just hurt and injured like you you learn to read your body oh, oh absolutely i mean these guys have marks and i remember myself even when i was training back in the day you know uh one of the things i don't tell people a lot because i don't i really don't share my story as much but still you know george trained me and at the givens rec center on east 12th street mm -hmm. uh back in uh, 1995 and there was a a ring on the floor with a two inch mat and it had ropes like actual rope ropes a uh, tied around on a square and george taught me in that ring Ouch. to do professional wrestling so i took backdrops on a two-inch mat i took hip tosses on a two-inch mat you know and i tell the guys the stories of what i used to do and how i was trained and it's never a case that i want to tell them hey i walked six miles in the snow to get right. to school you know the story yeah. but you know but i always want them to let them realize that what you have today in a wrestling ring and what you're learning from a wrestling school be appreciative and work hard because those times that i had compared to what you have today it's day and night. Yeah. And and if you can't do it now, then your dream will never be fulfilled. Yeah, you got to go through those, you know, pay your dues as as we've always heard. You mm -hmm. know, and we we talk to countless legends and they talk about, you know, got to pay the dues, got to, you know, whether it's the 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 hundreds of matches and the, you know, and and the miles on the road and all that good stuff. Um you're right. There's there's a certain there's a lot of work that goes into it before you become a Keith Lee or Ricky Starks or Christy course, James or everybody. Mm -hmm. one of those, you know, mm -hmm. one of those stars. And and that's one of the things that, uh, you know, you look at the list of wrestlers that have come through AAPW mm -hmm. and it is, it is such a, you know, such a who's who of not only stars of the independent scene here in Austin, but people that have, that have gone on to, to bigger and better things. Like yes. a Ricky Starks, who mm -hmm. was just the NWA television ch champion and has had a great one run with the with the new NWA under Billy Corgan. Mm -hmm. um, talk for a second about how proud you are of the legacy that your graduates have you know have carried forward with AAPW. I, I think words do not describe it because to me. 
when I see somebody who's left our school and has graduated and has gone on to the road and they travel and they're going to cities and they're getting booked and they're getting, and then later on they get signed by somebody, you know, I, I can be one of those persons that sit there and say, Oh, that's mine. Oh, that's mine. That's my guy. That's my guy. I have no reason to do that. I have no purpose or reason to do that because to me, their glory that they're getting alone in the business is sufficient for me Mm -hmm. because the legacy of what we taught and what was taught to them from George, myself, and everybody that has come through there, to me, that is when I give myself a pat on the back. And I I pat my own back and say, wow, good job. Look what he's doing today. I have no purpose to do that. I don't I don't have a purpose of live vicariously through somebody and say, oh, this guy's mine and, and he's this and or this this girl's mine and she's that and she's gone on to this, this and and I have no reason to do that because everyone knows that these guys and girls come from AAPW and they know the talent. I might not be a name. I might not be a person who has been to WWE, been to other places, and I might not I might just be an average Joe. But from the time that I started wrestling, Stu, to today, I've been a student of the game. And I've learned it yeah. and I learned it properly and I've learned it from sitting there and shutting my mouth and listening and then teaching what I was taught and then now teaching the same philosophy and producing. And now I'm seeing the fruit that's being produced from this. Absolutely. I mean, I was, you know, we were backstage together when, when AEW was at the HB center in Cedar park and to watch you interact with the start with, you know, Christopher Daniels and, and Nyla Rose and Cody and Dustin, and of course, and, uh, it was it was fun to watch and it was fun to see, you know, their eyes, you know, understand that yes, this school is is something special and it it's you know it, it's really cool and then have them agree to come out and do seminars and and work Absolutely. with your yes. work mm-hmm. with your students, mm-hmm. you know, especially you get someone again like Christopher Daniels who's got twenty six twenty seven years in the business, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and now he's doing. He's he's doing his own teaching yes. with with those AEW stars. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Um, let me ask you this: uh, You run shows every two weeks, at least mm-hmm. once we get through this <laughs> whole <laughs> yes. COVID nineteen thing. You run shows every two weeks, mm-hmm. you know, and and talk about the philosophy of these shows. Uh, talk about you know how what it means to you when you see one of your students perform in one of those shows in front of fans, and you you see in them you see that that switch get flipped that light turn on yeah yeah exactly um you know as the program that we go because our students that go through our program it takes a we give them a year a year worth of training and i tell them all i said you're going to train and you're going to have a debut with us your debut will be with us all the time and you always start with us and your first matches will come through us and blah blah blah. so these guys are aware but for me to see these guys that have worked so hard in the past months, two, three, four, five, six months, whatever the case may be, and for them to go up there and do and then actually, like you said, the light comes on and they they went from actually being students to actual pro wrestlers for the moment mm-hmm. because they haven't graduated our program. So at that moment for them to have the spotlight and to have the, the attention and the crowd cheer and call their names and boo them and love them and hate them and all the other, all this stuff – Music to my ears, brother. Right. Music to my ears. Because there I'm seeing that these guys were hungry. These guys want it. And who knows where they're going to go with this after they get a taste of this and they realize, hey, this is I like this. I want to do more. And just for me to sit there and, and I am a hardest critique because I don't critique them individually. It's like I, I critique them as, man, I need to cover this in class on yeah, Monday. Right. I got to cover this in class on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, we, we need to work on this more in detail. So it's not a matter that I go back there and say, well, you messed up this, you messed up. No, I go back and say, we got to work on this. We got to work on that. Yeah. And, and, but basically I'm out You're there. You're harder on yourself as an instructor than you are uh, on them as a, uh, as a yeah, student. Exactly. And I think that's probably the hardest thing for me because I sit back and I think I'm having a heart attack, but I think it's not because of what these guys, because because I didn't teach them the right way or I forgot to teach them this or we didn't cover this in class and right. I forgot to cover this. And, you know, so it's just me, you know, having, but I guess the you smile from ear to ear. You've seen me in my matches and my oh, shows absolutely. and you see how these guys are, are out there and they're after afterwards where they're, 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 they're smiling from ear to ear and because what they're able to accomplish and what they did were five months ago, they were not able to. And now look what they're doing. So 
something great. Yeah, I, I remember uh, Rob. You mentioned Rob the Builder, one mm-hmm. of your one of your bright students and great kid, and watched him. I saw him at a, a AAPW show, and then saw him in Anarchy, and I, I so we saw him at Inspire, a show that you know one show that I I was working, and then to see him, the, you know, a few weeks ago when I came back and uh, was honored to do commentary, and you could you could just see the the night night and day difference. That you know, in the progression that he's made, and it's it's so cool to watch the the students that you have and watch. I I call them kids because they're the yeah, younger, they're, than, they're younger they're, than me. They're, they're still you my know, kids. I look right. at them as my kids. But yeah. to see them and to see the the growth that they have, mm-hmm. it's really something special. Talk with Ray Campos, the head of America's Academy of Pro Wrestling again. Official AAPW dot com. You can also find them on Twitter at official underscore AAPW. Um, you Wait, don't go ahead. Let me let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. I'm really curious. So you broke in around 1995. Mm-hmm. I tried breaking in around 2007. And, and back then, everybody wanted to be either Chris Benoit or Chris Jericho or Shawn Michaels. I, I'm not sure some of your influences, but I'm kind of curious when these new kids. Are trying to break into the business now. Who are they trying to emulate? I guess everything you see today, what you see on TV and what you see on the internet and what you see out there. You know, I try to tell these guys the people that I remember growing up watching myself. Uh, Stu, I don't know if you remember old Houston wrestling with Paul Bosch mm-hmm. back in the the seventies and the eighties. That's what I grew up watching. That's what I grew up going to wrestling and watching. Um, you know, giving you a match of the day. I was watching, I found this on YouTube and it was a, a, uh, dog collar match between Hacksaw Duggan and, uh, uh, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. You know, mm. uh, for me to watch something like that. And, and I remember watching that match and I was like, that was the one I was there. I was there for that one. Yeah. Because so seeing cool. where the camera was and I was like, I was sitting on the opposite side. Yeah. I remember that match because I was remember watching Buzz Toyer fly out of the ring with the chain around his neck, busted open, and the fans were like at shock. And I mean, it was just a momentum and thinking of what was going on. I was taught and raised on that. So when I see these guys now, they come back and they say, well, I want to do this or I want to do that. Of course, I have to tell them, guys, that will come in time. You will get that style. That will become that. Let's work on making, teaching you the basics of catches, can professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Let's learn that first. Once you learn that, you can make, you can copy anybody or be your own person. And so today I'm thinking more guys are just whatever they're seeing out there, whatever is hot at the moment. That's where they want to follow. But, of course, I always have to bring them back down to earth and say, hey, hello, reality. Yeah. We're right here. We're not, <laughs> we're not living that moment. We're living here. We're in, the, we're in, a, in a warehouse with a, ring, with a couple of rings in here, mm-hmm. and it's hot, and it's cold or whatever, and this is back to reality. It's good back to work. Absolutely. You know? I think of, you know, like talk about current time. I think of Joey Janela, mm-hmm. who everybody thinks of as the guy that takes all the, all the risk and, you know, the extreme and everything. But at the base – He's a he's a fundamentally sound wrestler. I've yes. seen him do it with Steve Arino. I've seen him do it with other other wrestlers, and you know people forget about that. That mm-hmm. they these guys know these guys and girls know the fundamentals. They yes. they've worked. They know those fundamentals. They've just now taken those and then expanded their repertoire. And yes, Mad Dog Buzz sorry, I think he was um, he was one of the craziest. Yes, uh, he you was. know I saw him. I saw him a lot in Mid South Wrestling. Mm-hmm. In fact, him and he and Hacksaw Jim Duggan had a huge 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 rivalry there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in fact, I was talking to Jim Ross uh, a couple weeks ago, and we talked about the coal miner glove matches yes. that they would do in <laughs> Mid-South. So I, I grew up with all that. Yes, oh, yes, I grew up so with all amazing. that. So amazing. So we're talking back in the 1970s and the early 80s. And one of the things that I'm doing now, I mean, I haven't done it lately, but I'm going to be doing it a lot more this year is uh, once all this ends, but is bringing those old type of matches back. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when I took over the school, I did bring back a dog collar chain match. I did bring back a Mexican death match. I did bring back a tech. Texas Tornado match. I did bring back, um, you know, um, uh, just matches that you have not seen in forever. And I'm bringing these matches back because people want to see those matches today, Stu. They want to yeah. see the old stuff. And that's what sold tickets back then because people wanted to see that. And if we now bring the talent that we have today or the talent that's being created today, we bring that talent in and we put those storylines in there, wow, well, we can't be stopped. I couldn't agree more. And, and you don't just teach wrestlers, right? You teach 
referees. Yes. I, and in fact, I worked with a young man that was working on doing commentary. Talk yes. about talk about the other aspects of wrestling that you teach at AAPW. Well, we, we have quite a bit of stuff. I don't know if you, uh, a while back, somebody posted on Facebook. I think it was Dark Star JR, one of our graduates. Some pictures on there. I don't know if you saw them. I don't know if you have them as a friend or not on, on Facebook. But uh, he posted some pictures where we were on TV here in Austin at, on uh, the uh, – um, at the um, oh, I can't think of the uh, the the TV stations where you do the 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 free TV shows back in the day. Oh, uh, 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 cable access, access, TV, yeah. access, access TV. Yeah. Well, you know, George had mini shows on oh, Access God, back in the day. Yes, in the nineties. I remember and it well. Where we were and we were on there, and I was I was his co-host at that time as yeah. well. Yeah, it was but you not, and young George together. Yes, I what, remember seeing you, those. Okay, you didn't remember that. Well, I, I mean, I, I was in the same class as Dark Star, so uh, yes. we're friends on Facebook, yes. and I know exactly. So what you saw what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was blown away by seeing that because at that time, George was teaching me how to be his co-host and his co-ring announcer and, and doing all that as well because George did that too. So um, I bring in the, the ability of teaching that because I also was on TV in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I was on TV in Houston. I was on TV in here in Austin. And I was on TV in Shreveport, Louisiana. And it was funny because when I did a show a while back, somebody came up to me and said, uh, we know you. I said, where are you guys from? We're from Shreveport, Louisiana. Were you the one that used to wrestle over there with, with uh, Skandor? I said, yeah, oh, that was of course. They remembered me. Of and course. I was like, we saw you on TV. That's awesome. You were a heel, right? So you were a bad guy. Right? Said, yeah, that was me. I was like, oh, I was, I was, my jaw dropped because I, that, that we're talking, oh, two, yeah, <laughs> oh, one, that they remembered me. Yeah. And I was just, I was just blown away. But we teach, Everything for for a ring announcing to uh, play by play, and I have the guys that we have now that ones you worked ones mm -hmm. work, you worked with uh, teaching that the referees, the managers. I guess one of my one of our managers we have you saw Benjamin Greenback, yes. who he walks out of the he walks out of the curtain, and they instantly oh, boo him. Of course, they don't like him. <laughs> Which at that's all. That's what you want. I mean, he was. I would say he was a he was a, a combination of Jim Cornette. And Ted DiBiase, it seemed that way. Just mm -hmm. kind of just you, know, you just there was no redeeming quality whatsoever. No, none, none. And, and it's funny because now today, don't, don't do, do I put him as a manager, but I also put him as a referee. And he comes out with his referee shirt, but it's green, of green and course. black. And and he of course does his his antics as a referee, and and even gets the crowd to even hate him even more. So you know, I, I tell him every time, and he comes back to the back and he goes, "Well, how was it?" I'm like, "Well, what the crowd think." They 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 hated me. Then you did your job. That's right. What do you want me it's, to tell you? <laughs> you know, it's amazing how well some of those some of those tropes that have been around forever, mm -hmm. going all the way back to the seventies and eighties with Paul yes. Bosch and, and everybody. It's amazing how well they work. And I wanted to ask you this because you've been in this business for a long time. But I need to take you back just a little bit for a personal story first, and, mm -hmm. and we'll jump into that question. So the very first day, it was at the El Gran Mercado. Mm -hmm. Back in the day on the east side of town, that's mm -hmm. where the school was at the time. And mm -hmm. I finally tracked you guys down. And I remember very vividly, uh, you were the first person I talked to. And you had like a little nick on your forehead. And like a total mark. I asked you, did you blade last night? And you, you know, you no-sold it. You no-sold it the whole time. And this is what, the mid-2000s. So we're in a funny time in the business where... It, Still trying to protect a lot of it, but a lot of people already figured out how it's working now. How how much has the business changed from that point on? Did you ever think that we would possibly be on a radio show talking about the business in 2020 when you think back to a story like that uh, in 2007? Mm, good question. I remember you asking me that question. I remember, I remember, yeah, I remember the same results that you asked me because even to this day when people ask me that same question, I still, you know, mm, I still look up at the air. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, wrestling has evolved. Wrestling has evolved and it keeps evolving. And that, um, yeah, back in the day, they used to do certain things. Um, you know, I'm not here to tell you, yes, it was done or no, it was done, or whatever the case may be. But today, wrestling has evolved to where people want to see actual action. And if something happens where someone gets a black eye, a cut above the eye, like in a boxing match, mm -hmm. uh, and there's blood, of course, it only adds to the scenario, adds to the story, adds to what they're being entertained for. So... I didn't. I, I knew wrestling one day would get back to the level it was because where wrestling is now, wrestling was like this, and Stu, you can remember mm -hmm. in the seventies and the early eighties, 
because we had territories then. Yeah. Wrestling was big everywhere. Yeah. It wasn't run by just one person. So today, for us to have the idea that now that the territories are on the way back and that no longer one person runs the whole thing, um, it's it's awesome to show, but it was a matter of time that the gates were going to blow open and this was going to go even bigger than what it is, and we're seeing that today. So uh, as to your question and to your, and to your comment about that, <laughs> I'm going to just say wrestling has evolved and it keeps evolving, and I expect it to evolve even more. Even with the time that I'm no longer in the business, I think it was going to be. Who knows where it'll be at that time? But till then, I'm just going to enjow the ride. There's, you know, you mentioned about the territories and stuff, and it's, it's something I've asked a lot of people. You mentioned the territory territories are coming back. Is that in the form of independent promotions? Are the independent promotions taking the place of what we used to know as world class in Southwest Championship Wrestling, Mid South, and Paul Bosch territory, and in Mid Atlantic, and and Jim Crockett? Is is that what we're seeing now? Absolutely, you're seeing it now. Look, look at look at the map. Pull out a map of all the, the promotions that you see, and look where the WWE AEW stars have been coming mm-hmm. from. They're coming from the promotions that are a little bit less, uh, their size, smaller their size, and they're coming from people that have market TV markets that have a big social media following that have people who are coming up in the business. I tell our guys, if you want to make a name for yourself, you have to go to the East Coast. The East Coast is where it's at. All these guys that you see right there on, from the AEW, look mm-hmm. at that. The majority of them, I want to say maybe 80% of them are from the East Coast. Yeah. You know? Why? Because the territories on the East Coast, you got Jersey wrestling, you got wrestling in Philadelphia, you got wrestling in Atlanta, you got wrestling in Florida, you got wrestling. So yeah, the territories are back. And and this is one thing that I want to do here in Austin. Even though we have wrestling promotions here in Austin, I'm a wrestling school, but I want to be a promotion. Yeah. Having my students be the promotion, and I want to be a household name. I want AAPW. People think about wrestling in Austin. I want them to think about AAPW, and that's my goal. And that's where I'm. That's why I wake up every morning to push my goal and to say, wrestling household name AAPW. Makes I want to be that. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. He is Ray Campos, Papa Don. Uh, catch him in the America's Academy of Pro Wrestling official AAPW.com. Find out all more about it if you're interested in possibly pursuing it. You can check him out there again on Twitter at official underscore AAPW. And uh, hopefully, as soon as this whole thing blows over, get back to doing some great shows. We got a at, lot of stuff AAPW. coming in. We have just when you were mentioning AEW earlier, uh, we have Nala Rose coming to AAPW. Yeah. Uh, we have Sunny Kiss coming to AAPW. Uh, I had Jay Lethal was going to be here from Ring of Honor. He was mm-hmm. going to be here, but due to all this, it just got thrown into the. So we got a lot of things working. So just you know, keep an eye out. We got a lot of stuff going on. At AAPW. Amazing, amazing. Ray, thank you so much, my friend. Thank all you the so best for having you. me, Justin. We thank love you for me. we love being to to be. Uh, 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 relationship with with AAPW, uh, we got our banner. We got I got a new banner for you, you. Okay. so there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, but yeah, check them out. AAPW Facebook, Twitter, official AAP, AAPW.com for more info.